Hey Fosstube, it's me Hannah the Okie Stitcher here with another Fosstube update. Today is Saturday, June 1st, 2024. Um, life update, the only thing I really have to tell you is that I did get my class dates for paralegal retraining. So that's cool. I got some end dates now. And yeah, um, I did pack up my filming stuff, which is why I am outside filming because otherwise it was just too dark and you couldn't see my stitches. But I wanted to show you my stitches so that I could start packing up my, um, the stuff so I could get on the road eventually. Now, I gotta finish. And I hope this is coming across clearer to you guys than it is to me right now. But this pattern is from Lunar Fox Stitches over on Instagram. They are in the middle of transitioning their shop from their independent website to a Etsy shop. And I really like this. It is the called for DMC floss. Two strands over one box, so two over one. And there is a ton of back stitch up here. That was I mean, I feel like I'm pretty decent at backstitch, but that was pretty difficult. And then there are some French knots down here and some up here in the tambourine. I really like it so much. Now, oh, this is on 18 count white Ada. And I wanted to stitch Esmeralda for the longest time. But it took me a while to find the right one because I wanted one that reflected Esmeralda in the book and not the cartoon because there is a huge difference. I read the book, um, it was getting, let's see, it was around the holidays, like November maybe. And Esmeralda in the book, okay, spoilers, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because this is not book two. But Esmeralda actually had a very very rough life okay like turns out she was kidnapped as a kid she like so like you don't really know much about her childhood um other than the fact that she was kidnapped and then like she she rescues this one guy that's not even in the cartoon but rescues him and then she ends up betraying her to uh Frollo who's obviously infatuated with her and the whole like marry me or hang situation was in the book she said no she dies <laughs> And Quasimodo tries to save her multiple times because this is like an ongoing th thing throughout the book. And Quasimodo is deemed the monster just because of his looks. And it's just, it's so sad. And then Esmeralda finally finds her mom at the very end and the mom kills, or the mob kills the mom because the mom's trying to protect her daughter. And, like, oh, it's just, it's so sad. And you get, like, the secondary story of the mom who, for, like, 15 years has been looking for her daughter and then becomes our hermit. And it's just, it's so sad. But I definitely, definitely recommend the book because it's just so good. It's so good. But, yeah, that is my finish. Okay. Now onto my lunch stitching. So this is on 14 count white Ada. Two strands over one box, so two over one. This is also by Lunar. And this is Coraline. So as you can tell, I have a lot already done. Um, I just need to do the, the white dots, uh, fill those in, and then the cat, which I've already done like the ears, so it's just like one color for the cat. And that's it. And then I gotta do the back stitching, but the back stitching is not even near what it was on Esmeralda. So I could probably get this done in like a day or two of lunch stitching. I just got sidetracked by Santa, which I'll show you here in a second. So yeah. So that's good. That's gonna be for my oldest daughter. We 
side note. So, um, if you like the movie, I would recommend the graphic novel of Coraline because the pictures are really, really good. But um, if you compare that with the traditional novel, it's the same thing. Like, you know, sometimes with graphic novels, they leave out some of the story because it's depicted visually, but not that one. That one is like, you could put the audiobook on and follow along in the graphic novel. Actually, that's what me and my old youngest daughter did. That way there was, she could enjoy the art and follow along. Okay. So, next thing was Santa. Now, okay, so I'm doing two of these for both my daughters. Now on both of them, I, let's see, I'll, I don't know what I showed you last time, so I'm just gonna say what's complete on both. So the numbers are complete, both the hats are complete, and both the jackets and the arms are complete. And then this beard is all done. And I'll be working on this beard sometime. The beard is actually kind of difficult because I doubt you can tell because I can barely tell in real life, but these two strands are not both white. They are different and therefore it is kind of difficult to know which one to stitch with. And then stitching this on white has been difficult too. So. I'm like, with one stitching, I'm kind of stuck because I'm like, man, I, I really just want to get the Santa done while I'm on this because once I put it down, it's prob probably going to be a minute before I stitch it again. But I don't know. But I also want to finish Coraline because it's so close to being done. So close. <sighs> okay, moving on. Um... So this is, the fabric is Grace Notes Reyes, maybe, 14 count Ada. This is my oldest daughter's stocking. So this is where I'm at. And I want to say, so this is the toe of the stocking. And I want to say I had everything from the toe to the beginning part of right here done. So I did all of this, the tree, some snowflakes, and then I am working on part of the leg on the second fawn. Isn't that pretty? This lighting is actually looking really good on this fabric. Wow. Okay. It is stitched two strands of called for DMC floss over one box, so two over one. Um, the only difference is I changed out the red. So yeah. Oh, and um, so with dyed fabric, it is notorious for shrinking down, right? So that was 14 count, but it shrinked down to a 16. This one is a 28 count and it shrank down to a 32. This is the fabric. Oh, and the pattern for the stocking I just got off of Etsy, and I can link that down below. So this is my yellow submarine. So I am stitching this one strand over one box, so one over one. And I started back here and I worked my way in. And better. Here we go. So back here I was still figuring out how to stitch this tiny stitch because like like I talked about before you know like I can see the holes but then like the floss is kind of poofy when you're stitching full stitches 
And so it was difficult seeing this, the hole next to it because it would just kind of like flop over. So the back end looks kind of weird. It doesn't look this weird in real life, but it still looks kind of weird. Uh, but I put in this, I filled in this yellow and this dark orange, and then I filled in all of this. Now, when I got, after I got done with this yellow, I was like, I gotta do something different. So I was stitching, I usually stitch in bed, but I started stitching the rest of this at my craft table in the dining room and it has been stitching up a lot better. So maybe I just needed better lighting this whole time. So yeah, I just need to fill in this little bit right here and then the stacks. And then once I get done with that, I think I am gonna put this away until we get to our next house and then I'll pull it out with fresh eyes and and think what I want to do because I don't know if I want to redo it like keep that as just kind of like a secondary but re stitch the yellow submarine um I don't know because the yellow submarine it's kind of cool because like you see in one piece like my of my like evolution, I guess, of like learning how to stitch and then getting decent at it. But I don't know. Because if you hold it far away, you can't tell. But when you're looking up close, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to put it away, get some time after I finish the Elsa Marine and then decide. Now, I have this, um, Law and Order Criminal Intent piece that I've been working on for quite a while, okay? And that's because I've been creating it as I go. And this is it. And it says, I need to use my most important investigative tool, my library card, Bobby Gordon. So this um, fabric is 18 count Ada that I coffee dyed myself and or maybe it was tea either way I just did it myself and then I don't know what um, motifs you saw last but there is a knife and a gun stick of dynamite um, skull and crossbones and the eyes are hearts and then a jar of poison, and then a tombstone that says R.I.P. on it. And then this says quack, but you can't really tell, so I think I'm going to rip that out because, okay, so the reason why I put quack on there is because my husband pointed out that Detective Eames is the teacher from Mighty Ducks the old Disney movie and now that he said it that's all I can think about right especially her voice that's what I really recognized and so I did a lot of thinking and I know what I'm gonna do for her as like her piece of the the puzzle and then later on um, they started adding in other detectives and the first couple I didn't care for, but towards the end, season eight, I think is when this detective was introduced. I forget the detective's name, I know, but it's Jeff Goldblum. And I think Jurassic Park when I think of him. So I figured out what I'm going to do for him too. That's criminal related but also Jurassic Park related and so I'm super super stoked. I think it's coming along pretty good. I 
yeah, but there's just some more like that I will need to think of. But we'll we'll think of it together. I am trying to finish this when I finish rewatching Law and Order Criminal Intent. Because this is my first time watching them in order. And I'm getting close to being done. I'm on season 9 out of 10. And 10 is not a full season. There's only 8 episodes. And actually season 9, I'm already halfway through because there's only 8, 18 episodes. And I'm on like 6 or 7 now. So yeah well okay so side note about this i have been using the hashtag murder may on instagram with this i heard about this hashtag from angie at the hibernation stitcher and i thought that it was just like anything murdery true crime whatever halloween maybe and um she said for more information go to wicked cat stitches stitchery wicked cat stitch and so i went over there started watching her videos and this is after i i was already using the tag turns out the the uh, hashtag was originally supposed to be for like you know the raven family groups that are called murders but she later opened it up to like anything murder related and that brings me to my shout out so wicked cat stitch you know of course she's doing murder may and i th think that's gonna bleed over into the next months even if it's not i'm still gonna use it until i'm done with my criminal intent one okay she is doing Oh, she is doing a stitch along that I haven't really heard a whole lot about, but I think that a lot of people on False Tube would be interested in, especially if you are doing the um, Moon Glow Sal with uh, Cross Stitch the Globe. I think that you would enjoy this one. It's called Curvy Candy, and I'm not even going to attempt to describe the beautifulness that is this piece it is a free chart um so go to wicked cat stitches videos get the information from her okay and then oh she is a 18 20 count ada stitcher and that is my sweet spot because i can take that anywhere um you know like my lunch stitches and whatnot and same thing for her <laughs> I wrote my notes on a Papa Murphy's instructions thing. Um, but same thing with her. Like, that is her sweet spot. Like, she can see it anywhere. But she does dabble in the smaller count, just like me. And one thing that she has been stitching that I'm like, ooh, I might have to get that, is the Edgar Allan Poe Tiny Modern uh, Modernist Tree. It's very similar to, or like same concept as like the Wizard of Oz one, the Alice in Wonderland one that have been really popular ever since uh, Market and Market last year. It's the same thing, but Edgar Allan Poe. And she is the first one that I've ever seen stitch it. And I didn't even know it existed until I saw it on her channel. So I might have to get that one. Okay, but anyway, that is all that I have for you. I am going to let you go before this wind picks up and you can't hear a thing that I say. So, TTFN, ta-ta for now.